Guys, I'd like to welcome everybody to our September Chamber Luncheon. First audible of the year, we were supposed to have United States Congressman Hal Rogers with us today. Unfortunately, uh, uh, one of his good friends, the former governor of Tennessee, actually passed away. Uh, he actually introduced Cynthia to Hal, so he wanted to be at that funeral today, and we completely understand that. So uh, we have got a fabulous audible. Uh, I always try to keep this. I had to burn a favor to do this today, but uh, we're going to give you guys a heck of a tourism update. Coming right out of Labor Day weekend, uh, the perfect topic to talk about. So thank you all very much for being here today. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to ask Pastor Darby Finnison, East Somerset Baptist Church, to please come forward and let's bless our meal. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the day that you've given us, the blessings that we have already enjoyed, and just the opportunity to come together. Lord, we pray your blessings upon the meal, upon the deliberations and the business today. But Lord, even more, we pray that you'll bless every single person represented here. Our homes, our businesses, our community. Lord, we need your blessing. And Lord, even more, I pray that today you'll just give us the grace to live it in such a way that whatever our relationships and whatever our paths today that we will bless others and lord uh, just be a be, be your influence in this community now be with us through this meal and event and we'll thank you for your goodness in jesus name amen thank you very much pastor Fennison. we appreciate that uh we have one two for tuesday today uh so uh, where's Brooke at? From Health Markets Insurance, Brooke Coffee. There she is. Can't miss her now. Now that I see her, you can't miss her. Is today your birthday by any chance, or is the something's happening here? Brooke, uh, why don't you come up and tell them a little bit about Health Markets for us? Hi, I'm Brooke with Health Markets. Oh, this thing is loud. Um, I am wearing a silly hat because it is my kid's eighth birthday. I did not lose a bet. <laughs> um, I'm here to talk to you about the Health Markets Recruiting Opportunity. And if you look on your table, you're going to see a card with a little blue stripe at the top. It says an opportunity of a lifetime. This job really is an opportunity of a lifetime. So I'm just here to tell you how much I love my job. Um, first bullet point says limitless earning potential. I found this job at the end of 2017, right after I became a single mom with no child support, so I needed some limitless earning potential. I want you to give this card to your friends if they need a different career. Um, also, great technology, great leadership. Our team is amazing. We're a nationwide team. As far as the earning potential, four years in business, five years really, my year-over-year year raise has never been under $12,000. In two years, it was over $20,000. One of those was the year of COVID. All we do is we help people find the right insurance plan. They don't pay us to help them. We ask everyone the same questions and just sort out what's going to work for their situation. Um, you can do this job from home. You can do this job from the lake. You can do this job anywhere you want. It's a great job. You can do it nationwide. If you are living here in Kentucky, you have to serve Kentucky, but you can serve any other states you want as well. So keep this card, put it in your pocket. It might not be for you, but we're looking for nice people who are eager to help others. That's what we're looking for. So if you know a nice person, eager to help others, wants a better career, pull out that card, give it to them, have them call my cell phone. I'll hook them up. Have a great day. Thank you, Brooke. That, you know, that brings up a good point. If anybody in here has job uh, opportunities, you know, you're welcome to send those to the chamber, and we're happy to post those for you. Uh, we get thousands of views on these. We'll get dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of shares. So if you have job opportunities uh, at your businesses, and I'm sure most of us do, seems like everybody's hiring these days, send those to us, and we'll be happy to send those out uh, for you. Uh, a couple other things just want to just want to make note of on your tables you might see a postcard we're getting started 
early this year uh, promoting our community Christmas parade. It's going to be, uh, as it always has been, the first Saturday in December. That's going to be Saturday, December 2nd. So go ahead and take a magnet or a piece of tape and put that up on your, your refrigerator and start thinking about your your float. We should have a theme very soon for that. And if nothing else, just if you want to come watch the parade, it should be spectacular. We have 10 to 12,000 people that come out for that. It's a, it's a great time. Uh, it's a big event, and uh, we always appreciate it. Chief Hunt, thank you very much for always helping us with the parade route and uh, traffic and navigating all the hurdles that come along with putting a Christmas parade together. We, we appreciate that. Uh, but that's going to be on December 2nd. Also just wanted to make note and uh, recognize and thank Chris Girdler and anybody else here that had a chance to come to our uh, a Toast to John Sherman Cooper event a couple weeks ago. So uh, Chris, I had the pleasure of working with him on this event and I'll tell you something, I've done this job for 12 years. I would wager it's probably in the top three best events we've ever done. So if you had a chance to go to that, you got a chance to see something really special. It was RSVP only and I thought it was spectacular. It was incredibly well done, and I want to thank uh, the staff at the Virginia and uh, Chris and, and Jessica Carlton and just everybody involved in making that happen. It was a really, really neat event and paid tribute to somebody. Uh, I've told the story many times. Uh, I went and spoke to a high school class a couple of years ago. We started talking about famous people from Pulaski County, and the first name I mentioned was John Sherman Cooper and not one person in that high school class knew who that was. So, you know, it really kind of took me back. And uh, it makes us take pause and, and we want to kind of re-engage a different, gener a new generation with the, all the things that John Sherman Cooper did. Somebody told me that they thought, they, when they were listening to the historical overview of John Sherman Cooper's life, they felt like they were listening to Forrest Gump, all the, the unique things that he'd done and all the places that he'd been. It was, it was very neat. So just wanted to recognize Chris and, and thank him for partnering uh, with us on that. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to mention our info tables real quick, and then I'm going to turn this program over. We've got a bunch of them. This is a free service that we provide every single month. I want to thank them for being here. If you ever want to set up an informational table, you can do that, there's no charge. There's just a, a certain amount of sp spaces, I guess you could say, but uh, it's, it's free as a chamber member. Just call Crystal and she can uh, get you on the list. So I'll recognize all those people. Citizens National Bank, Hinkle Contracting, University of the Cumberlands, Rotary of Somerset, Pulaski County, the Living Bread Soup Kitchen, Casa of Southern Kentucky, Limestone Manufacturing, Somerset Junior Women's Club, The Chalet Restaurant, The Chalet Gourmet, I should say, Restaurant, Sky Hope Women's Recovery Center, University Center of Southern Kentucky at SCC, United Way of South Central Kentucky, Country Boy Woodcrafts, my man over here is putting some cool stuff out, so I just want to give him a plug, so they're doing some neat stuff, go see those guys. Uh, the Center for Rural Development, Ameticis Home Healthcare, Crown Services, Five Star Land Title, First Choice Clinics, Somerset Sober Living, Somerset Pulaski County and Visitors Bureau, and SPEDA. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> oh, I also see the suit shop on here. That was written on here. That's my bad. I see you back there, and there's a beautiful... I'm actually wearing one of his jackets right now, so I better not forget him, should I? Uh, the suit shop, and then I, we've got SPEDA. So that's everybody. So uh, with that, I think I'll turn everything over to my boss, president of the chamber this year, Mr. Sean Doherty. I'd like to welcome you to our September chamber luncheon. First, I would like to um, recognize our sponsors, our world-class sponsors, our um, Chairman Circle Sponsors and our Ambassador Circle Sponsors. With special recognition to a couple new sponsors we have, uh, at the Chairman Circle level, CentOS has come on board, so we're excited about that. And then at the Ambassador Circle Sponsor level, South Central Bank and Keller Williams Commonwealth Realty. So we're excited about those folks joining our wall of sponsors 
and being part of the chamber. We'd like to give a, a, a big round of uh, appreciation to the center for uh, offering and, and providing the venue for us, as well as Sassy Spoons for catering, uh, the fine meal you had today, Coca-Cola bottling, and Pepsi bottling of Somerset provided drinks as well. So a big thank you for those folks. And now at this time, uh, Lisa Phelps will introduce our new chamber members for the month of August. Please join me in welcoming our new members. If you are in attendance, please stand. A Better Bag Company, Ella Reed. Agus Mental Health, Tammy Brown. Affordable Crawl Space Repairs, Brian Bain. All the Wild Farms, Katie Johnson and Mason Wiles. Big E Disposable, Chris Duff. HHO of Southern Kentucky, Travis Burgett. Huff's Tree Service, Timothy Huff. J&M Lawn and Landscaping, George Avena. Lacey's Animals on Wheels, Lacey Johnson. Life Springs, Lori Price, Longhorn Steakhouse, Trisha Moody, Menzer Hardwood Company, Patrick Olson, My Massage Suite, Ashley Phillip, Next Level Telecom Services, James McQueen, R&R &R Mobile RV Repair, Robert and Rebecca Karst, Single Prairies LLC, Ivana Mars, Spicy Ginga Hot Sauce, Jacob Bates and Joseph Strell, SNS Shine LLC, Shana McCallahan, The Captain's House, Wesley McCaskill, and Welcome House Incorporated, Kelly Rose. Please give all of these new members a round of applause. Earlier, I give recognition to our sponsors who fuel the financial machine, but much of the work of the chamber is carried out by our ambassadors. So I would like to recognize our chamber ambassadors. If you're an ambassador, if you will please stand at this time. <laughs> These folks carry out the work of the chamber and make us what we are, so we're so appreciative. There's one ambassador that stood out again this month as uh, ambassador of the month, so we'd like to uh, recognize Reese Shook as our ambassador of the month. Congratulations, Reese. Today's corporate sponsors are Hinkle and Citizens National Bank. Hinkle is uh, give their time to our speakers today, so uh, would just like to recognize them and thank them uh, for their contribution to our community. Stephen Lee heads that team up. And in fact, Stephen is the president of Hinkle's Kentucky operations. Uh, Steve couldn't be here today, but uh, Steve does live here in our community, and he's from our community, so we're awful proud of what he and his team over at Hinkle do. So thank you, Hinkle. <laughs> and now I have to take my chamber hat off 
and talk to you with my Citizens National Bank hat on. On behalf of Citizens National Bank, I would like to take just a couple moments to tell you about our bank. We're a $630 million bank today, headquartered in downtown Somerset, and we've been here since 1920. All of our growth has been organic. We've not purchased any banks. We've not merged with any other banks or anything of that nature. So we feel really good about that organic growth. Just hard work to be the best bank we can for our customers to fuel that growth. We're the largest community bank in town with 30% of the market share based on the last FDIC analysis. There's a total of 13 banks in this town, so 30% of the market share, we are very thankful. We're blessed with a true sense of community. Our owners and board of directors are local. Our team lives, works, and plays in this community. We give of our time and resources for the community because we believe in this community and our way of life. We're be, we are very proud to be a part of this community and we're thankful for each of our customers and our teammates. I personally have been blessed with the opportunity to lead our bank. It is bittersweet as Mr. Bloomer will retire in February. I'll officially take the reins on March the 1st. I'm proud of the manner in which Mr. Bloomer has led our bank with integrity and professionalism. And I commit to keep that same tradition of customer service, integrity, and professionalism as we move forward together. To wrap up, I would ask that each of you let me know how Citizens National Bank can be more involved in this community and how we can help with your civic, personal, or business financial needs. We're community focused and driven, so please let us know how we can help. The last thing I'd like to do is recognize my team here. If you guys would stand up, we can't do anything without team, and this is a good representation of our team here today. We did have to leave a few back at the bank to run the bank right now, but thank you guys. All right, I'll go back to that chamber hat now. Of course, our thoughts and prayers are with Hal and the family of Don Sunquist. Um, I, I know they're having a tough time today, um, so I'd like to make sure and keep them in our thoughts and prayers. But we do have an all-star lineup with us today to talk about and give us an update on local tourism. And I'll introduce uh, Michelle Allen, our first speaker, and then she'll introduce uh, Allison Piles uh, when she's done. Michelle received her bachelor's degree in broadcasting and communications from Eastern Kentucky University in the year of 2000. She graduated with her Tourism Marketing Professional Certificate from Southeastern Tourism Society's Marketing College at the University of North Georgia in 2005. Previously, Michelle held the position of Campus Coordinator and Regional Outreach Agent for Eastern Kentucky University, overseeing Pulaski and five adjacent counties. Her long-time career in tourism began with Congressman Hal Rogers' Tourism Initiative, Tour Southern and Eastern Kentucky. That, that uh, was an initiative of Hal's. And she led a marketing and economic education for more than 47 counties of the region. Allen was with Tour Southeastern Kentucky for more than 10 years. Allen is currently the Smith Travel Report Coordinator for the Kentucky Association of Conventions and Visitors Bureaus. She is a board member of the Kentucky Tourism Industry Association, also receiving her certificate as a Kentucky Tourism Professional from the KTIA. She's the Vice Chair of the Somerset Pulaski Economic Development Association, the Chair for the Southern Kentucky Vacations Region, the Vice Chair on the newly created Dream Big Burnside Authority and an executive board member for Kentucky Association of Conventions and Visitors Bureaus. Michelle lives in Somerset with her two sons, Spencer and Jensen. Without further ado, Michelle. Okay. 
Bobby does this to me every time. I somehow have to speak after a long weekend. Um, I think it was last year, July 4th, so here we are after Labor Day. Uh, first of all, thanks, Bobby, for considering having us uh, to come and speak, Allison and I, about tourism, because you know it's our passion, and we're really excited about it. Um, with that said, I don't like to read off notes, but I'm going to have to to keep focused and not keep you all here this afternoon because I do love our tourism industry. Um, I'd first like to thank a few people. Judge Todd, Mayor Keck, Fiscal Court, City Council, SPEDA, the Chamber, our legislators, Mayor Lawson and Dream Big Burnside, and most definitely my board of directors and staff for their support of tourism industry here in our community and in the entire Commonwealth. Without all those folks, none of this would be possible, and we couldn't continue to do the work that we do here in Pulaski County. Of course, my name is Michelle Allen, and I am the Executive Director of the Somerset Pulaski County Convention and Visitors Bureau. <laughs> it's somehow I always work for a company that has extra long names. So, Executive Director of Lake Cumberland Tourism is what I usually like to say because it's a lot easier to do so. Um, these days, we're not just a marketing organization. We're not just destination salespeople, we're politicians, developers, community organizers, and neighborhood advocates. So we try to do a little bit of everything to help our community when it comes to tourism. I've been in the tourism industry for 23 years. Yes, I am that old, and I absolutely love my job, so I'm thankful for the position that I have right now. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our office. Some of you may know where our office is, or you don't. Do you know where the three fish are in Somerset? Okay, what about drive through Baxter's? Aha, uh -huh, yes. We are by the drive through Baxter's with the three fish focused in the front. I always like to tell people that's exactly where we are. If you haven't stopped by, please do to talk to Miss Katie. If you want any information, Miss Katie's in the back. So we're an office of three, and we are funded solely by a 3% transient tax. And what that means is, you guys know when you stay in a VRBO or you go to a hotel and you're like, oh, man, it's only $99 a night when it's really 150, because then you start looking at that tax, I'm 3% of that. So we are only funded by that 3% tax to be operated here in Somerset, Pulaski County. So anytime somebody comes to our short-term rentals or stays in our hotels, we put heads in beds, that helps us to turn that money around and market for everyone here. We are operated by a board of directors. The board of directors has to consist of two hotel or a short-term rental um, representative, two restaurant representatives, a chamber representative, and two at-large members, meaning we can't just throw anybody on the board. It has to be somebody that's in the tourism industry and is focused and knows what they're talking about when we have our board meetings. Today, though, I'd like to go over tourism impact numbers from years past and through 2022. We're not talking about 23, we're not done with 23, so I can't give you those numbers for 23, but we're gonna talk about years past through 2022. And when I discuss these numbers, it's only for Pulaski County. Only for Pulaski County, so they're fantastic. These figures were created by an Oxford economics company called Tourism Economics with over 500 clients across the globe. And they were hired, let me say this, by the Kentucky Department of Tourism. Not me, not my office, not the judge, not the mayor, from the state. So anybody that wants to say, yeah, those numbers aren't right. Yes, they are. They're from the state. So we can't complain about that. Um, they form these figures from direct impact. So you've got a direct impact. That means somebody's coming and staying in our hotel. Somebody's eating in our restaurant. That's a direct impact. Indirect impacts, meaning somebody's staying or going to our restaurant, but that restaurant needs to order more goods for that restaurant. So that's indirect. And then you have induced impacts. And that is generated from money spent by the employees in the tourism industry. So somebody that's working at a restaurant, working at Haney's or what, when they turn around and use their paycheck on monies within the community, that is induced impact. Among those indicators, all these big words, anytime you throw tax out there, it's scary, I know, uh, is sales tax, wages, employment, federal taxes, state and local taxes. But in Pulaski alone, if we did not have tourism tax dollars left behind in our communities, we would all pay per household an extra $418 a year on taxes. So those that say tourism don't help us, well, we're saving you $418 plus all the great things that come with tourists. If anybody ever thought that Texas Roadhouse 
Longhorn, Chick-fil-A, all the restaurants everybody wants to have were coming just for the folks in Somerset, you're wrong. They look at those numbers of folks that are coming to our community because they want to make sure they're as high as they can be. So we're very glad about that and we're very happy about that. It's extremely important to know, though, not all tourists come from Ohio. <laughs> I know it seems like they do, but not all tourists come from Ohio. We actually have them from Pennsylvania, New York, California. We had a couple from Australia in the office the other day. But we also have to realize we're regionally. So when you've got folks that live in Macquarie County, Russell County, um, Clinton, Wayne, they come to us to spend their hard-earned dollars because, well, they don't have a Texas row house and they don't have a Lowe's, and they don't have some of the things that we have to offer, and that's why we call ourselves the capital of Lake Cumberland. So they come to us spending their money, which includes as they, they are tourists because they do not live here. So all those lines that you see at Chick-fil-A, it's not everybody from Somerset. It's a few of us, but it's not everybody that's from Somerset. Again, these numbers that I'm gonna read off to you are uh, from Pulaski, just strictly. 2018 was our first record year. Our first record year was in 2018, and we had a $119 million economic impact. When I say economic impact, I read somewhere somebody said, that didn't come home in my check. <laughs> no, that is money left behind tourists in our community, and it may have come home in your check. You never know. It depends on what kind of position you had. 2019, we jumped to 126 million. So here we're thinking, ooh, 2018, we did great. 2019, we went to 126 million. And I will say, this is also the year that Leslie Eichard, which she's sorry she couldn't be here today, and our office, so the city and the county tourism offices, started to collaborate on marketing functions and marketing ideas for that. So we were really proud of those numbers as well. 2020, do we ever wanna talk about 2020? Not really. So 2020 was COVID year at 115 million. So you're like, oh man, we had that 126 and we went down to 115. We were only down 30%, folks. Where everybody else, like your Lexington, Louisville's and Northern Kentucky's that I like to call the Golden Triangle, was down 60%. We were up because we had our outdoor recreation. We were also the only county in the entire state to have a consistent occupancy rate for that year. The only county in the entire state to do so. So we're really, really proud of that. A lot of that is due to Summer Night's Cruise. Keith Floyd, he was gonna have that Summer Night's Cruise people. He was gonna do it. So he marched his plan right up to Frankfurt and said, here it is, we're gonna have it. Mayor Keck fought for us for so many different things. We still had Moonlight Festival. Our hotels did everything they could do. Our short-term rental folks did everything. And look at our restaurants. Boy, we're still using those services now with the takeout services. So everybody in our community really came together. So that kept us from losing 60%. We only lost 30%. So we were actually quite proud of that. So in 2021, we had a huge jump. Why? Because people noticed us the year before. And we went to $137.8 million. So we were noticed, folks. So from 2020, 115 to 137 was a huge jump because they came, they saw, and they wanted to return when they could and bring all their friends and family with them. So let's see what happened in 2022. Show the video, Chris. I think 144.52 million speaks for itself, and I think it, it, it wanders a, a hand of, of applause there. I mean, a lot of that is thanks to everybody. Everybody that's here, you're a part of that growing number. And to keep that number going, I'm gonna tell you a few of the projects that we have been working on. Um, we were awarded some ARPA funds through the state, which is federal dollars. We absolutely did not have to get those ARPA funds, but our state legislators, specific in our communities, fought for us to get this money. 
They knew that tourism is an industry. They knew it was one of the things that was hard, hit the hardest, and we absolutely needed to make sure that our tourism offices were able to get more funding. So we were allocated over $200,000 just specific for our office to only market our community, but we did have to come up with a 10% match. So it's not always the best thing. So you, you still had to come up with the match. Some of those projects included a new billboard on I-75, inclusion of the summer issue of Garden and Gun with a half a million folks reach in that. Garden and Gun was like a dream of mine from the first time I started this. If you don't know what Garden and Gun is, look it up. Uh, digital marketing at Bluegrass Airport, digital marketing in Tennessee that we're just getting ready to start all through Nashville because we are seeing Nashville to start to infiltrate our website more and starting to head this direction. The U.S. Today Hunting and Fishing Guide, just to name a few. So we do all kinds of different projects with those funds that we would never be able to do with the funding that we usually have. We were also awarded the multi-jurisdiction grant for Lake Cumberland Wayfinding Signage, which was awesome, um, creating at least 50 new signs across the lake. You know, some of them, if any lake goers, you'll see some of them are shot at, some of them are dilapidated. Some coves don't even have signage and they need to have signage. So we partnered with the Corps of Engineers I want to say that again, we partnered with the Corps of Engineers. Has anybody ever known in the past partner, partnering with the Corps of Engineers? That would have been like we couldn't believe that it was happening, but we've got a great ranger now, Jonathan Friedman, and he's a fantastic partner, and I hope he stays here in our community because he's done so much for us. And also at each marina, we will have a key, which will have our full-service map on there. So as people are moving to different marinas, they know where they're at and where they're going, how they can get to Harmon Creek, how they can get to Party Cove, or how they want to go fish into this special honey hole. So we're doing that as well. We had to come up with a 10% match for that too. So luckily with our communities, we had to have four counties or more to be able to apply for this. So we had Clinton, Wayne, Russell, City of Burnside, and City of Somerset, and most of the marinas pitched in to help reach that match for us. So you talk about a great partnership and getting these signs done. I'm very grateful that to the state for allowing us to have that. I want to say thanks to each of you for helping us create a destination where people want to live, work, and play. We get people in our office weekly wanting to move here, and we say, how did you find us? We Googled, we saw, we th see that things are changing, we see that things are improving, we notice that your economic development, we see these partnerships, we want to move here. I will say, sorry folks, we've got quite a few Californians that are <laughs> coming to the office weekly trying to come to somewhere where it's a little bit more peaceful. Folks like our community because we've get, got great southern hospitality, we've got what you need, we're not too big. So they don't want us to be too big because they're leaving that, and they want to stay in a place where people appreciate each other and have great partnerships. So we are excited to continue creating better quality life for our citizens in Lake Cumberland, the capital of Lake Cumberland, but like Congressman Rogers always said, I had to get Chris to remind me of this because I couldn't get it exactly right. He always says, and most of you have ever been around Congressman Rogers, there's 12 inches of separation between a pat on the back and a kick in the rump. We still got more to do. Thank you, guys. So with our next great partner, um, I'm delighted to introduce our next speaker, Miss Allison Piles. Allison is the executive director of Burnside Tourism. She's been in this position for the early part of 2022 and has jumped in feet first. She just got out of having thunder over Burnside, so she's worse off than I am right here, I'm sure. Uh, she's made a significant impact to the city of Burnside and to the Lake Cumberland region. Allison Piles is originally from Northern Kentucky, but moved to Pulaski County in 2016 with her daughter and husband. She studied organization leadership at Northern Kentucky University and worked in banking for 15 years before becoming the executive director of the city of tourism for the city of Burnside. Allison is a 2017 graduate of Leadership Lake Cumberland, a 2022 graduate of Leadership Kentucky's Bright Program, a 2022 Young Professionals of Lake Cumberland 40 Under 40. I can do that now because I'm not under 40. Um, Allison serves as secretary on the Pulaski County Habitat for Humanity Board and volunteers at the local high schools as often as possible. 
When she's not working, Allison can be found with her family, from cheering on her daughter Emma at softball games to boating or four-wheeling with her husband James. Allison values her family above all. Miss Allison. I understand that Michelle has a, another obligation that she's going to have to get on out of here for. So before we let her leave, I'm going to go ahead. We have a nice gift for our speakers today. Uh, we are deeming them both friends of the chamber, and I want to present them with their friend of the chamber. I've got the certificate. I'm just going to go ahead and go. <laughs> Crystal, if you want to go ahead and come on up. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? The call to unplug, to unwind, to rediscover that part of you that craves more. Rediscover adventures free of screens and controllers. Rediscover rest and the tranquility of a great night's slumber. Rediscover the joy of the simple things we often take for granted. Rediscover what really matters can create memories you'll never forget. Rediscover Burnside. Plan your adventure today at visitburnside.com. All right. So as Michelle mentioned, we had some ARPA funds that filtered into the different individual offices, and that was one of the projects that we were able to accomplish with those funds. Um, and we're extremely grateful that this has been a year, or I guess a year and a half, where we've seen a huge influx of dollars that we would not normally see. Um, it's allowed us opportunities to reach places and people that we would not normally get to share our vision and our community with, and I'm extremely proud of that. Um, as, my, as my bio said, I've been with uh, the city of Burnside since March of 2022. Um, and I kind of came in at the easy part of times. We didn't, I didn't get to deal with COVID in, in the tourism industry. I was in the banking world and that was its own challenge, but um, I, things were definitely on the way up when I came in and so I'm really excited. I also got uh, brought in with the most amazing team at the city that um, I, I could not ask for a better team. As Michelle mentioned, we just finished Thunder over Burnside, which was a two day event this year. We were in Cole Park Friday and Saturday. We saw just shy of 2,000 people in Cole Park for our two-day event. Uh, who would have thought in Burnside, you guys? I'm, I'm so excited, and our goal is to get to the point where our events can be free, um, and I think that that number will grow exponentially when we get that, um, that free entry. Um, so we were, we were free for children this year. We had a $15 admission fee for adults, and I'm tickled to death with, with the turnout that we were able to produce. Um, one of the focuses that I, that I had when I came um, into this position was because I'm funded a little differently than Leslie and Michelle, I'm funded on restaurant tax. So if you've noticed that your um, cheeseburger and french fries at Wendy's is a little more expensive at South um, than it is at the North location, that's because it's 3% more expensive and that's me and I'm sorry. Um, but I'm not sorry because it allows me to do things like Thunder Over Burnside um, and, and these amazing commercials and promote our community and I think that's worth three percent um, but one of the things that I wanted to focus on was making sure that we spotlighted our restaurants um, if they're if they're the ones that are carrying over that fee and, and passing that along to their customers the least we can do is make sure that we're promoting them a, as equally and so we started a restaurant spotlight monthly um, that can be found on our social media platforms we take one restaurant every month, we do a slideshow, we give a little bit of history about it, and we talk about their hours of operation and where they're located, and we, pr we promote that on social media. And we feel like our restaurants are really starting to see a little, a little bump in their numbers from that. We are also able to partner with Summer Nights Cruise. Um, we found out about two weeks before their first, uh, well, yeah, their first um, host, or, or their first meet in 2022 that the meet and greet spot was open and so we threw it together and we made it happen and this year we've improved on it. We've also included a restaurant passport this year 
So if you are a meet and greet attender or a summer nights cruise attender and you come to the meet and greet in Burnside, you can pick up a passport and as long as you go to each of the restaurants in Burnside, you can be entered into a drawing to win $1,000. We are putting our money where your mouth is. And we felt like that was another great way to get people to patronize those restaurants that are funding us. Um, our Christmas parade, um, Bobby, you'll be happy to know, it is Friday, December the 1st this year. <laughs> uh, last year, they had, dis they had tried to do, the, the board had made a decision to host it in the morning of the, of the Chambers Parade. Um, and, and, well, <laughs> we'll be hosting it on Friday this year. <laughs> um, Christmas Island, there are flyers on your tables. Guys, it's Christmas in Burnside pretty much 365 days a year, November 18th through December 31st. Um, I can't take any credit for bringing Christmas Island back. That was my predecessor. Um, but I will tell you, we intend to make it better every year. Um, so Frank was, was had the brilliant idea of bringing it back after a 17-year hiatus. Um, and so last year, I had the challenge of, of making it better than it was in its you know return. So we added a vendor village, uh, which was an incredible opportunity. This year, we'll have vendor village again. We'll have eight vendors. Thursday through Sunday, and they'll ha offer all kinds of different crafts. Um, I will tell you the most proud moment of Christmas Island for me is I crunched the numbers this year. We have given back over $65,000. I'm going to say that number again. $65,000 to nonprofit and local charities that work our event. Yeah, that deserves a round. So the folks that are at the gate when you come to Christmas Island, those are local nonprofit and charity groups, and they, they receive a portion of the gate um, for their week that they work. The, the folks that are in the concession stand with the Santa, John Alexander, um, <laughs> those are local nonprofits and charity groups, and they're you know raising funds for their organizations. And so I cannot tell you, when I pulled that number, I knew it was going to be a good number, but I didn't know it was going to be that good. And that made me extremely proud of the fact that we are able to put on Christmas Island every year. Um, I think that, that giving back to the community in that capacity makes it well worth the labor of love that it is. Um, I also want to let you all know that we do have sponsorship opportunities available. So if you've not gotten involved with Christmas Island, there is still time. Please see me. Please see Heather. Please see pretty much anybody at that Burnside table. We'll take your money. I mean, we'll get you a scene. Um, <laughs> Again, as I talk about the ways that we want to continue to improve it, one of, the, one of the things that we noticed last year was we expanded our marketing for Christmas Island substantially from 21 to 22, and we noticed that we were almost 50-50 for out-of-town versus local guests last year, which is great. I love that we are seeing more um, out-of-town people, but I wanted to know why our locals weren't, weren't participating. And so one of the incentives that we are offering this year to bring them back is we're offering discounts. Um, on Monday nights, we'll be doing a veterans, uh, veterans discount. So with your, um, with your veterans ID or, or your military ID, you'll get $5 off your, your car's admission. Um, on Thursday nights, we're going to do a student night. So with your student ID, you'll get $5 off of your vehicle's admission. So we're really excited about that. We think that's important to make it affordable for our community and to make sure that our community can still participate. Um, we, like I said, we love the out-of-town guests, and, and we want to keep showing off our community to people who don't live here, but we also want to make sure that the people who live here can enjoy it too. And that was one of the ways that we felt like we could do that. Um, in 2024, we've got some big things happening. We want to continue to partner with, our, with Summer Night's Cruise. Keith Floyd is a, an amazing um, director, and, uh, and I'm really proud of what he puts on, and I'm really grateful that we're able to play that small part. Um, we also want to continue working with uh, Tiffany Finley um, at Master Musicians Festival. We've been the Shade Tent sponsor for two years now, and I got news for you. Man, that's a heck of an event, and I'm, I'm super proud that we're able to be there and participate with them. Uh, we've also will, we've moved our Memorial Day concert just one weekend later. We're going to do that first Saturday in June, starting in 2024. We don't want to compete with Memorial Day. We know folks are in town to, to be on the lake, and it's still graduation season. So we want to give people another reason to come other than those big holiday weekends. So we'll have um, our summer kickoff concert will be the first Saturday in June in 2024. And then 
Um, next year, Thunder over Burnside will just be one day. It'll be Saturday of Labor, Labor Day weekend. And guys, we've got some really good stuff coming. Um, we came up with some really good ideas and got some great feedback this year. Uh, and I can't tell you yet because uh, one of my board members is here and uh, they haven't voted on it yet. And she'll rat me out. So, <laughs> um, But no, that's I, I'm excited because I feel like as a person who didn't grow up here, as a person who was a tourist first and chose to move here and raise my family here, I feel like tourism is truly the gateway to to growing our community. Um, and, and I love that we have partners like Citizens National Bank and Chris Girdler and Bobby Clue um, and really this whole community. You guys just embrace people that come and you make them want to come back. And whether that's just to come back and visit or to come back and stay, we're really excited about it. So thank you guys so much. A big, big thank you to Michelle Allen and Allison Piles for giving us a good tourism update today. These guys are working hard to keep the dollars coming into our community so we can have uh, the nice things that we do. So we were very appreciative of them. Okay, we have some good door prizes today. First, we will draw for 20% off M&W printing. 749-629-629. Nobody? 629. All right, we'll draw again. 749 Six five five. There we go. All right. That was donated by M and W Printing, by the way. Next, we have a twenty dollar RB Dry Cleaner uh, gift card uh, donated by RB Dry Cleaners. Last three five zero eight five zero eight. Nobody, no takers with five zero eight. Go again. Seven two three. Seven two three. There we go. Next we have a Buffalo Wings and Rings gift card. Twenty five dollars donated by Buffalo Wings and Rings. Five four four. Five four four. There we go. Next, we have a Hardee's gift card for the Hardee's South, donated by Hardee's South. $20. Hardee's gift card, 553. 553. All right, over here to the right. Next, the United Way of uh, South Central Kentucky has donated three balcony tickets uh, for the United Way event with Sean Reynolds. Five three zero, five three zero. There we go. Next, we have the suit shop. They have a necktie and sock set uh, donated by the suit shop. Last three six eight six, six eight six. There we go. All right. I've been admiring this Yeti cooler up here donated by Hinkle. So next, donated by Hinkle, we have a, a really nice uh, cooler up here. It is 657. It's got wheels and everything. I don't think I've seen a Yeti with wheels on it. That's cool. 657. 
7. Ooh, I bet they wish they hadn't left early. <laughs> 5, 6, 8. 5, 6, 8. There we go. All right. And last but not least, uh, donated by Citizens National Bank, Keeneland Club House Passes for the fall meet. And that fall meet is the 6th through the 28th of October. This is four Keeneland Club House Passes. 732. 7732. Seven, there you go. All right. All right, before we uh, dismiss, I'd like to remind you um, our uh, next chamber meeting will be October the 3rd. Uh, UPS Global VP of Public Affairs, Nick DeAndre, will be here. Nick DeAndre from uh, UPS will be here next month on the 3rd, October the 3rd. And in normal fashion, if, uh, if you will, please stand for us to be dismissed with the pledge. Josh Edwards from Citizens National Bank will lead us in the pledge. 